Okay, let's start the wonderful world of authentication. So the first thing we want to do is create a new controller. We're going to call it the session controller. Okay, let's go look at the code. So we're going to go into the session controller and this should start looking familiar. So just like the sign up page, we have a new action in this case for the session controller, and that is going to point to our sign in page. So I'm going to go to views. I'm going to create a new folder called session. And then within session, I'm going to create a new file. So this will be our sign in form. We're going to be using very similar EJS here to handle our flash message, basically any errors. And then we're going to be looking for the email address, the password, and then of course our CSRF token. So let's save this, restart the server, and take a look at this file. So now I'm going to go to our new controller session and our new action. And here's our sign in form. So for our authentication, we're going to be using the session. And we used it in our flash message where we just created a variable and the text of that flash message was passed via a session variable. But how does it work with authentication? The whole idea of the session was very difficult for me to kind of wrap my brain around until I started actually playing around with the session and looking at what it contained and what effect it had on the whole authentication process. So I created this example, which will hopefully shed some light on how the session and authentication work together. So let's go to our session controller. And I'm going to paste in some code. The first thing I want to do is just look at the session object itself. What does it contain if all we're doing is actually just accessing it through console log. So let's do that first. And again, we're going to be accessing it every time we hit the new action. So I'm going to restart the server. And just refresh this page. Now let's look at the log file. So here's our session object. It contains some attributes. Right now, the session doesn't expire. Expires is set to null. This original max age is set to null. HTTP only being set to true means that in most modern browsers, the cookie associated with the session cannot be accessed via the browser page. And that's great in terms of security. So now let's go back into the code. And now I want to set a new variable called authenticated that we're saving with the session and we're going to assign that to true. I'm going to save it, reload the server, and then refresh the browser. So we hit the new action again. Now we can see that the session object contains this new attribute authenticated and it's set to true. Since the session doesn't expire, and again, this session is our browser interacting with the server, and it knows that it's our browser. So this session will continue indefinitely. For example, let's go back into the browser. I'm going to close this tab, and we'll go back and hit that same route. And authenticated is still set to true our session is still alive. And that's very useful because we're going to go through a process that the user is going to give us their email address and their password. We're going to look up the user's encrypted password. We're going to encrypt the password that they gave us here and compare it. And if they're equal, then we can authenticate this user. We know that they are who they say they are. But we need some way of storing that information or this authentication from page to page. We don't want to have to require from the user that they authenticate, that they give us their email and password every time they want to look at a page. 
So we need some way of storing that information and we do so through the session. Now we could set an expiration date on this cookie. And although in this web application, we're not gonna ultimately do that. Basically when someone logs in, they'll be authenticated until they explicitly log out or the sales server is terminated. So let's go back into the code. And these three lines that I'm uncommenting are pretty simple. They're getting the current date and time. They're setting an, for a new variable called new date object. They're gonna take this previous date and add 60 seconds to it. And then we're gonna set the expiration of the session, and in this case, the session cookie, to be the date and time that's 60 seconds after this initial date. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. And then in the user controller, again, just arbitrarily, I picked the index action of the user controller to log what the current date and time is and what the value of that authenticated variable that we had previously set to true right here in the new action of the session controller. Okay, let's see how all that works together. Let's go ahead and restart the server. So we're gonna refresh this page as if we've authenticated. And authenticated is equal to true. Now let's go back to the browser and hit the index action, in this case, slash user. When we do that, we're gonna see that initially the expiration time is 23.22.46. When we hit the index page, it was 23.22.04, and authenticated was still set to true. Let me refresh the page. And once again, 23.23.27 is before 23.22.46. Now let's refresh the page, and again, authenticated is true. Now when we go back, 23.22.53 is after the expiration, 23.22.46, and our authenticated variable is now undefined. So the user is no longer authenticated. So why would we want to set an expiration? Well, if the app needs to be ultra secure, you could set it for a particular time, let's say an hour or 15 minutes, and that way, if the user stepped away from their browser, they would ultimately be signed out. Okay, this is a good stopping point because in the next screencast, we're gonna go ahead and start with the create action, which will further the process of authentication. Thanks for watching.